Welcome to a new astrological podcast. This podcast is titled Saturn's Missing Crown. And it is really just a, a podcast describing the astrological influence and meaning of the planet Saturn. It's a, I'm going to be reading from, from an article I created in 2018 for one of my uh, teaching groups on Facebook. I've decided to share this with everybody else. So I'm just going to jump right into it. It's uh, a podcast delineating the influence of Saturn in the natal chart, and it is titled Saturn's Missing Crown. The reason for this title will be made evident pretty soon. So here goes. I once watched several documentaries on YouTube with Norman Begram, claiming that huge space vehicles were building the rings of Saturn. He provides pictorial evidence to support his claims. I was fascinated by these videos, especially since the claimant was not a notable quark or charlatan, but a respected engineer with a distinguished career working with some of the world's most advanced aero defense firms. I am neither qualified to assess his claims, nor do I really want to. The rings of Saturn are indeed very beautiful, though, if you have a if you have never seen them, then I suggest you should make the effort. They hold a mystery and a power all on their own. Astronomically, Saturn is the second largest planet in our solar system and the sixth from the Sun. Its diameter is also about nine times that of Earth's. Despite its huge size, it is less dense than water and is largely thought to be made up of the lighter gases of hydrogen in its exterior and more solid iron and nickel in its core. That's as much astronomy as I'm willing to discuss about Saturn in this post. I was always puzzled about how astrologers of antiquity reached the consensus that Saturn represents form and structure. If you have ever seen Saturn in pictures, you would quickly realize that there is no planet quite like it in the solar system. It is unique in the accentuation of its rings. A few other planets boast rings too, but these pale in significance when compared to Saturn's rings. Since I couldn't find any other planet in the solar system that looked remotely like Saturn, I had to conclude that its visible characteristics did not lead astrologers of old to their consensus. Another puzzling anecdote that has been handed down through popular storytelling is that Saturn's rings signify boundaries and limits of the developing psyche. You know, it may or may not be. I have no way of knowing, but my gut instinct tells me that this is not quite correct. Else, I could also conclude that Saturn's ring should signify beauty, because beauty is the first impression one gets on observing this gas giant through a good telescope or in satellite pictures. In my view, what Saturn truly represents is form, a special and natural type of form which resonates through time. I will explain what I mean by this. According to Liz Green in her famous book on Saturn, Saturn's role in the natal chart is to give form to some group idea. As Saturn spends roughly three years tra traversing a zodiac sign, many ascendants will share a common position of Saturn, albeit Saturn's degree in the same sign of, on each natal chart may vary. What this implies is that within the same three-year period, all ascendants born within this time frame will share varying degrees of similarity regarding the form of their social identities. Within this context, Saturn takes the form of social acceptance. It represents the configuration, procedure or system of generally acceptable social norms which characterize every age group. To be accepted and successful within this club, you will need to play by Saturn's rules for that three-year age group. You will need to recognize and develop your own social intelligence acceptable within that age group. The forms that Saturn build can also be observed in the natural world around us. Clearly, nature possesses many forms. We have conjured up a theory of evolution to describe some aspects of the natural world which change very slowly over time. Evolution, as it is most popularly defined, is the gradual or sudden procedural change of systems in time. It is a Saturnian system of thought, if there ever was any. However, 
there is something else which we observe in the natural world inclusive of ourselves which is quite stunning it is the development of number you see numbers are the quintessential repositories of form the two-ness or oneness or fiveness of something is a real physical constraint on the form of that thing you only need to have a basic understanding of chemi chemistry and physics to realize the overwhelming importance of number in the arrangement of the periodic table of elements or the configuration of atoms and their nuclei. Yep, they are all Saturnian. This brings us to a salient point which I call the crown of Saturn. Commentary. Now, um, up until this point, you know, this is the introduction of a key point in the definition of the Saturnian influence in the natal chart. Saturn is essentially the repository of form and structure, and um, the form is a repository of order, because there is a difference. A human being is able to differentiate between order and chaos. Now, what we call chaos, even though chaos has a, a very specific meaning from the physical sciences point of view, you know, how it is used in, everyday, in our everyday reality is when we do not understand what is happening. When that when we find ourselves in such uh, environments, we describe it as chaotic. Now, when we understand what is happening, it is usually because we have a, a procedural understanding of how things take place. And, you know, the quintessential form of procedural understanding is when we have a plan. And our plans are underpinned by relational order. We can see how one thing becomes the, another thing and how it transitions along. We understand the flow, the process flow. Okay, And it is this procedural flow or this system of relational order which we call number. That's really what it is. So numbers are quintessential forms that are pristine in nature, meaning they do not require the physical manifestation of existence. They are outside existence, if you care. And they form the basis upon which human self-consciousness is based. Now, I'm not saying this as a, as, a, as a type of belief, you know, this is what I believe. No, it is the truth. And as far as that is the case, then it doesn't matter what you believe. That is what it is. Human consciousness is underpinned by the relational order called number. Because that's how your brain stores information. That's how everything in your brain works. That's, how, that's why, for instance, when people, when scientists, for instance, are asked to explain the nature of the world, they start by telling you that the world is composed uh, of atoms. And then when you go into an atom, they begin to point out the subatomic particulate nature of, of matter. And then when you go deeper, you get into something called, uh, you, you know, quantum fields, you know, based on quantum field theory. Yeah, but what is a field? A field is simply a set of numbers. And when you, even when you look at something called an electron, electron has no definition except through numbers, formulas, and all that. Now, it's not because that we do not understand what an electron is. No, that's the only way it can be defined, because that's exactly what it is. Okay, it's your brain doing that definition. That's how you understand it, because that's how you under, that's how human beings understand the nature of order. And this is the archetype which Saturn represents. That's it. That's really what it is. Okay. Now back to the um, back to the article. Saturn has long been associated with the number six. Don't take my word for it. Apart from the obvious fact that it is the sixth planet from the sun, the planet itself tells you of its special relationship to the number six. Starting from the first picture sent back by the Voyager spacecraft in the 1980s. A striking feature was captured at Saturn's North Pole. What Voyager photographed was a persistent hexagonal cloud structure sitting and rotating with Saturn. In other words, there is a huge hexagon sitting on Saturn's North Pole, and it is, it is a persistent feature that has been there since the first pictures arrived almost 30 years ago. A hexagon is a six-sided shape, and it is synonymous with a cube. Why is this important? The importance lies in the periodic table of chemistry and the distribution of prime numbers in arithmetic. Now, the details are too long to, to list here. But those who are familiar with high school chemistry will immediately realize that carbon-12 is the sixth element in the periodic table because it has six electrons and six protons and six neutrons. 
It is also not mere coincidence that carbon-12 is the basis for organic life on planet Earth. Carbon-12 is the form or structure which makes life possible on Earth. Why carbon-12? The answer to this question is because carbon-12 can form multiple, almost infinitely complex structures with itself, oxygen, hydrogen and several, several other elements that are found in the Earth's atmosphere. It serves as a computational backbone for all, not quite all, life on Earth, including the structure of our DNA. Saturn represents the high-level regulatory intelligence that ensures the manifestation of the most efficient form required to deliver the success of an objective. The forms that Saturn generates are stable, effective and slow-changing. This is the reason why Saturn signifies form. Your guess is as good as mine how the ancients knew about this. <laughs> ancients indeed. The Romans recognized Saturn as the, god of ag as the demigod of agriculture, and the Greeks called him Cronos. Saturn's position in the natal chart describes the nature and type of regulatory or social intelligence that an ascendant has access to. It describes the relationship with his or her social sphere, and more so, the ability to navigate that social sphere. Saturn has gained a bad and notorious reputation in countless astrological writings. Its ability to deny and delay is legendary. However, what Saturn does is imbue an ascendant with the knowledge of the social and regulatory intelligence required to build the right form for whatever objective the ascendant has in mind. In the natal chart, Saturn clearly specifies what this knowledge is and how this knowledge must interact with the social sphere. Those possessing of this knowledge wear a crown on their heads because they understand how to regulate the social environment. Saturn's position and its contacts in the natal chart also signify authority, as conferred by the crown which is worn. Like agriculture, Saturn not only tells of a time to plant and a time to reap, but Saturn tells of the process of planting, the need for good procedures, the patience and perseverance required to reap a harvest. Most astrologers see Saturn's symbol as a sickle. I see it as half a crown. Go right ahead and have a look. The other half is what we must construct in this lifetime. In natal chart synthesis, I show you how to construct the other half of Saturn's crown. He or she whom Saturn crowns cannot easily be dethroned. That's the end of the article. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to freestyle uh, the uh, Saturn and the different signs. Now, uh, but one important point I want to make is when any planet finds itself in a sign, what it means is that that sign needs to produce the core effects of that planet. And in this podcast, what I've uh, been able to surmise is that the core effect of Saturn is the construction of form. So what Saturn does is to make anything, any energy that it contacts, take on a physical material form. And it's not just a material form. It is a form that is socially acceptable within a particular range, age range. That's really what it is. So, for instance, because Saturn spends three years going through a particular sign, then the group idea that is formed, you know, which is, you know, the group idea that is given form needs to find relevance within that age bracket. Now, when Saturn is in Aries, the core form of Aries is the essence, the essence of an impulse, an impulse function. That's what Aries is. Aries has no form. That's traditionally what Aries doesn't have a body because it is not Taurus yet. So Aries is the manifestation of an impulse function without form and without real awareness. The only, exist, the only type of awareness Aries is privy to is that it is. And that's about it. That's where its entire uh, essence comes from. So when Saturn finds itself in Aries, Saturn tries to give material form to the impulse function of Aries that has no form. The result is a mismatch. And so what, Saturn, what happens with this uh, combination is that there is a blockage. In the ability to act because Aries that doesn't have any form doesn't know what it's supposed to be and Saturn being the taskmaster for the creation of that group idea or group form insists that Aries must take on a form and so 
ultimately what happens is when the years go by and the, this creative tension that exists between Saturn and Aries begins to play out, the group idea that is formed becomes uh, the desire to act just for the sake of acting. The desire to act without any type of understanding. So Saturn in Aries evolves to just act. And so it's constantly, the constant fear that is introduced because of the inability to form a structure, a group idea around the impulse of Aries means that Aries now seeks to counteract this fear in the physical world by just learning, to, by just trying to act. So they may alternate between being afraid to act and then acting at the wrong time. Now the idea, remember Saturn also represents time because time is structure. The idea now becomes that over time, over a period of trial and error, the individual with Saturn and Aries learns how to act at the right time with courage and, bra and bravery, you know, by nullifying that, not nullifying, but being able to direct the impulse function in such a way that they're able to act at the right time. Now, this process of, of, of learning to do this is not easy because it's going to take a lot of time to learn uh, when to act and how to act. Because originally what this starts out as is, you know, very acting for the sake of acting. So there's a tendency for cruelty by doing the wrong thing to the wrong person at the wrong time. And over time, Saturn brings the experience of, of and this is not easy because Aries is not known for self-reflection, but ultimately what happens is over time, Saturn engineers realities whereby the acting at the wrong time generates consequences for the Arian to deal with. And it is the, in dealing with these consequences, the Arian begins to intuit that, look, if I actually act at the right time and do the right thing, then I can minimize the nature of these consequences. So Saturn in Aries is the lesson around being able to act, knowing when to act and how to act. Okay, that's really what it is. Now, moving on to Saturn in Taurus. Now, the essential nature of Taurus, Taurus actually has form. Taurus is what happens to Aries when Aries takes on a body whereby its experience of itself is now, in a sense, complete. Because now it knows that it is, and it knows how it is, because it can get that feedback on its nature through the information flowing through its material senses. So it realizes now that it has a body. So, and this is perfect for Saturn, because Saturn is an Earth, it's an earthy, it's an Earth sign, and Taurus is also an Earth sign, so it's, a, it's kind of a good match. Because Saturn now brings in the, the impetus for a group idea or group form into the sign of Taurus. Taurus delineates as the search because Taurus is that enjoyment of Aries, of sensations that are coming through its material senses. So everything that Taurus is, is built around this flow of information through its material senses. It wants to continually experience the pleasure, this pleasurable flow of information. So what it does, what Saturn, how it recreates Saturn, it, it becomes extremely resistant to change. If you thought a Taurus by itself was stubborn, Saturn in Taurus is an extremely stubborn personality because once the Taurian calibrates its sense of pleasure and fixes a datum to say, okay, these are the conditions that I enjoy, that's it. So the, 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 the Saturn in Taurus evolves to be obstinate and so the lesson that is learned in sat with saturn and taurus is that life involves change okay life involves change and sometimes and the change must occur in the flow the interpretation of those material senses and so this becomes a theme of the work that needs to be done in life to understand how to change okay now, the good side of this uh, Saturn and Taurus is that these people are capable of very persistent effort over time. The will, the, 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 the persistence to be able to, for instance, to create a long-term program and stick with it is almost unsurpassed. It's the sheer tenacity of it. They just don't move. They, they don't budge. Now, if the Saturn and Taurus is... is backs a bad idea then you can also see why there can be problems in this area because you know it becomes difficult to abandon a bad idea okay and they suffer because of this all right
Now, that, that said, they are extremely slow, but very persistent over time. They are your long-distance marathon runners who don't give up. But what they must learn in life is that the necessity of change. Life is the necessity of change. And it has to be a gradual, slow change for Torian, but still change nonetheless. Okay? Now we move into Gemini. Now, when Aries has learned to a sense of being from the information flowing through his material senses, then the first thing he wants to do is he wants to be able to communicate about that sense of being that it feels. It wants to be able to talk about how it feels. And that is the essence of Gemini. Now, the glyph of Gemini are twins, meaning they are two, they're, it's a, a single personality that simultaneously faces both directions, which in essence translates into the simultaneous perception of duality within the psyche, deep within the psyche, as defining the personality archetype by itself. So when Saturn comes into Gemini, it tries to give form to this perception of simultaneous perception of duality. So these are your personalities that can do what? They are cunning, very clever, because they can see two uh, opposing sides of an argument. They, they literally, they can benefit from both views because they're clever enough to realize that both views are just what they're just different perspectives on one view that's really what it is so the challenge for the challenge for uh saturn and taurus so saturn and gemini in this case is to be able to discipline their perspectives their ability to see two things at the same time to be able to focus because in order to, you know, it's, it, 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 it makes no sense taking uh, two opposing views in everything that you do. You wouldn't really get anywhere. At some point in time, you need to stand for something. And you need to pursue a particular direction. Now, this is very difficult for Saturn and uh, Gemini to, to initially learn how to do. The tendency is they realize the superior advantage they have in being able to see both sides of an argument. And most often than not, in the early stages of the evolution of this personality archetype, they seek about how they seek taking advantage of this, literally. You know, they want to take advantage of this advan this thing which they have because their intellect is superior in the sense that it often starts off very slowly, meaning Saturn and Gemini initially manifest as a reluctance to communicate. That's externally, but internally, the mind is, you know, it's the mind is giving structure and form at a very early age. And when they begin to learn how to open up, the initial tendency is to take advantage of this superior intellectual power that's been building in the background. And over time, they realize that you can't take advantage of this duality, this mental duality, and, and you use that to as an advantage for the development of the self. You need to take a side. And this is what happens at some point in time, the choice must be made. And this is a critical point in the evolution of Saturn and Gemini. They must choose. And yet it is either they would choose the good or they would choose the bad. The good is how to, how to empower themselves and other people. The bad is how to empower only themselves. So they must make this choice at some point in time. And what Saturn and Gemini indicates are there are consequences to both choices. And that becomes the work that needs to be done in the life of the native. That now brings us to Saturn and Cancer. Now, the archetype of cancer is that of emotional security and the, the, uh, the, what, the establishment of an emotional foundation. Usually, this is what happens within a family unit. And the essential aspect of that familiarization, that familiar unit, is the inculcation of unconditional acceptance within the psyche. This is, what, this is the greatest gift that a family gives to the developing uh, native is it brings a feeling of unconditional acceptance because that allows a native to form a solid foundation. Now, what Saturn does when it comes into this is to test that, is to first of all make it impossible to create a foundation because what it demands is the establishment of a foundation that can last, that can survive the test of time. What Saturn wants to do in, in, in Cancer is to build an aspiration so high and so great that it's like the foundation for a skyscraper compared to the foundation of a one-story house. So when Saturn comes around, the individual, the native is trying to build a one-story building and Saturn says no. 
you cannot build a one-story building. So if the native doesn't understand this, they keep trying to build the foundation for a one native one-story building. And every time they try, it falls apart. They consider themselves absolutely unlucky. They are born into a family where they cannot get this feeling of unconditional acceptance. And they go about trying to seek that from other familiar units that they're trying to construct for themselves, and it does not work. They begin to surmise that, oh, they may be cursed with bad luck. They don't feel settled within themselves. And so the manifestation of their world amounts to nothing. They cannot construct anything. Nothing lasts. Now, the individual at some point in time, through trial and error, and usually through a process of maturity, on, begins to understand what is needed is that I'm not meant for a one-story building. I'm meant for a skyscraper. So what I need to do is to look for how to construct a foundation that is so deep that it can support a sky-rise building. And so that is what they set about doing. They begin to, the establishment of Saturn in, in Kansas means that the individual begins to intuit that their sense of self-worth has to be so deep as to support a sky-rise building. They have a lot to do on. They're going to be, they, you know, their task is to build a foundation that can support a great career or great aspirations. And so for that, you don't need fickle people. You need a real family. And your family is not just restricted to the people that you are born into. So by placing that sense of value upon themselves, they begin to attract people who can establish that sense of value for them. And that is where the, the work, the life work begins to play out. They must erect a foundation so deep as to be one third the size of the sky rise that they need to construct. So if they're aspiring to be doctors, they need to really put in the work. Because they won't just be any kind of doctor. They will be the doctor. You understand? Saturn and Cancer is the precursor for, to a great career. All right, moving on. That brings us to Saturn and Leo. Because what happens in Leo? Leo is the search for what? Self-significance. And self-significance is simply the sense of value. And the value is attached to the world, to the ego. There's a lot of negative connotation in the literature regarding what the ego is supposed to be. Now, the ego is simply the point that, the point where the psyche that was born in Aries evolves to the point where it recognizes itself as a co-creator. And that is how it establishes the fact that it is here. I can do. I can create. I have a will. And that will can change and affect the reality around me. That is the nature of Leo. Now, this search for self-significance is so... It should be... It needs to be so light as to become imperceptible. When it is very heavy, the individual is under the yoke because they cannot create without force. They cannot create without letting everybody know how great they are, how big they are, how, you know. That's because the individual doesn't feel their self-significance. They may think they do, they may say they do, but that very saying is evidence that they do not. Because the crown of, of Leo, the crown of the ego, needs to be worn almost imperceptibly. The individual doesn't even know that it's there. Okay? Now, when Saturn comes into Leo, and Leo needs to create the... Then all play ends. Because Leo is often associated with the stage, you know, the creative stage and the, the individual on display, dramatizing for the whole world and dramatizing for people to see. Now, Saturn comes in here and says, oh, no, 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 no. There is nothing funny or laughable or joking about Saturn. Saturn is extremely serious. And it brings that seriousness into the area of Leo, meaning that the creative intents and the creative processes of Leo now take on a very a much deeper significance. And Saturn demands that, um, that depth from the Leonine character. So you're no longer on a stage acting so that people, you know, entertaining people. No. You are now the one who owns the entertainment industry or the entertainment business. So Saturn brings in a dramatization into the seriousness of, of the issues being, in, being dealt with. So you are not the artist on the stage dramatizing for everybody to see. You are the you may be the artist on the stage, but you also own the entertainment industry. You own the product. You own that's there is a seriousness that comes into the create the will to create. 
And often this is not easily understood. And so what happens when Saturn is in Leo and, and the young native is that they are absolutely terrified of their creative side because they intuitively understand what needs to be done. And so in order to defend themselves against this, this, uh, this fear, they construct all sorts of what I call plastic edifices designed to protect the ego from facing this fear. But as usual, what happens with Saturn is that all these plastic edifices, they all crumble under any significant weight. They crumble. Why? Because the individual, the edifice constructed is proportional to the, um, the sense of significance which they feel. And it is plastic because the sense of significance itself is plastic. So when Saturn loads it, it breaks. Because what is required is the authenticity in that self-significance. The individual simply needs to realize that they are enough. They were born enough. They are already enough. All they need is to have the perspective that they are enough. And usually this does not happen until much later years, maybe in the 40s. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult because and that's why some astrologers say that Saturn is not comfortable in Leo. Because if Saturn is anything but a, a drama, dramatist, a showy kind of dramatist. No, what Saturn needs to show off with is its work, its earthly work, what it has spent time creating in such a way that the establishment begins to clap for it. That's the nature of Capricorn. And that's what Saturn is. He's at the top of the world, taking applause for a great work that he has done, a work that involved perseverance, discipline. Because what the accolade is not for the work itself, it is also for the process. It wasn't easy, but it did it. And that is how it announces its greatness. And that's what it brings into Leo. So the usual Leonine wanting to be the life of the party because, you know, they're fun and it's all fun and games. Nope. Saturn won't let you do that. So it brings a seriousness into the whole thing, meaning you Saturn and Leo is born to rule, is born to carry authority, is born to wear a crown. Now, its perception of that need that's what the life work is all about. Because it must come as the lightest of crowns, the lightest of, 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 of things to carry. You must not even know that you're, you're wearing authority. You must be able to wear, and yet you must be very serious about that authority. So that is the, create, that is the creative challenge with Saturn in, in, in Leo. The group idea and the form that it must build, it must realize that it is a king. That's it. Now, the other placements in the chart will determine what the nature of this position, you know, what the, the, you know how this perception will be uh, will evolve, but this is a, the essential message of the whole thing. Now, when Saturn goes into Virgo, something else begins to happen, because remember, Leo is the, the creation of the ego, the will. Okay? Now, we all know that in the world. They're not, there's, just, just, there's not just a human being in the world. There are many human beings and everyone has, a, everyone has Leo, everyone has a will. And so the process of engaging with other wills in order not to lead to a clash of wills, which is the essence of conflict, is that wills must be attenuated because that is the nature of compromise. And this is exactly what Virgo talks about. This is the meaning of Virgo. Virgo is the attenuation of the ego for the purposes of what? Going into relationships. That's really what it is. The ego is still there. It just chooses not to acknowledge it as much. That's all. And so that is how why astrologers describe Virgo as a kind of service and all that. But it is not service as in a slave or someone that is forced to serve. No. Virgos are very willful because the ego of Leo is in Virgo. It's just that Virgo chooses for the purposes of entering into relationship and cordiality. They choose to attenuate that ego. So with Virgo is literally, how may I help you? That's the whole point of Virgo. Okay? And Saturn in Virgo brings a seriousness to this, whereby the individual now sets, goes into the business of helping others. Not because they are charitable or whatever, because they want to encourage relationships. So Saturn in Virgo is literally, it's, it's very active, but it's active internally. Because the reception, the reward for that active service, you must be, it must be found in Libra. That's really what it is. The fruit comes from the nature of relationships that are so formed. 
But in Virgo, Saturn in Virgo is the work that needs to be done. It is the attenuation, the seriousness behind the attenuation of that ego. So when Saturn is in Virgo, you must at some point in time professionalize or give group idea and form to the nature of service. That's your job. That's your life task. You must bring a creative uh, construct into service for others. That's really what it is. When Saturn goes into Libra, and then emphasis is now put on the seriousness of relationships. So this is not just, I mean, Libra is designed to be one-on-one uh, -on -one relationships in terms of a professional relationship or a marriage relationship of some kind. Or partnership, you know, uh, the need to be with another. The, uh, but what Saturn, what Libra is all about is the, the negotiation between two wheels. Remember... Wheels that come into that egos that come into relation that try to get into relationship with each other and each one is blasting at a hundred percent. There is no way they're going to be into it. They're not going to go into some type of dyna dynamic. The only thing they'll get is conflict. So Libra also signifies that conflict, but it also more readily signifies the negotiation of conflict. That is the negotiation of a relationship. How much of me should I need? Do I need to give to you for us to have a dynamic between us? And how much of you is acceptable to me to make the relationship worthwhile? This is the, the essence of Libra. And what Saturn does here is to bring in an absolute fear of this dynamic. And in the beginning, the individual is unable to negotiate. They accept whatever is tossed at them. And they begin to recalibrate themselves based on the pain that is generated from this process. So they become abused because, listen... Givers have to set boundaries because takers never do. So at some point in time, Saturn and Libra brings relationship pains like no other to the point where the individual now says, you know what? Now I'm taking absolute control of this process. So when I get into a relationship, I must take my demands as they are. If you cannot meet them, then that's the door. That's really what it is. But this takes time because the individual doesn't put themselves forward in a relationship in any significant way. They're basically a doormat to start with. And then over time, they begin to rationalize and they recalibrate their, 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 their dynamic system to the point where they are now able to negotiate successfully. So ultimately, Saturn and Libra is destined to have excellent relationships. They become so good at relationship management, they may professionalize the whole thing and start a business. They may turn out to be great facilitators between people. Okay? Now, Saturn in Scorpio, remember, Libra is about the negotiation because of the work that needs to be done in Scorpio. That's the whole point of the negotiation, is the intimacy that needs to take place in Scorpio because Scorpio now becomes the generating unit, the generator. The intimacy that takes place in Scorpio, that is the generator of material success. And when Saturn finds itself in, in, in Scorpio, it is absolutely focused on this generative process. So Saturn in Scorpio sets off in the beginning with an ex you know, a absolutely humongous sexual drive that doesn't find material release. So the individual is blocked from being able to release this huge sexual tension and sexual energy within them. And that becomes the story of the narrative. This, the life story is... Because first and foremost, they, be, they hide this. When they start off, they hide this, this need, this instinct. Very cleverly, because Saturnian defenses are some of the most sophisticated in, astro in astrology. So, but deep within them is raging because they have no outlet for this, this monster that is inside them. And so they start off having very dodgy and illicit affairs with usually um, people that they can dominate in terms of power. People who, can, who they can keep silent. And then over time, what happens? This backfires several times, you know, creates a scandal and all that. They begin to learn that the scorpionic energy cannot be um, wielded uh, directly by the ego, meaning the individual does not understand what true intimacy feels like because they never put themselves in a position where they can experience the vulnerability of intimacy. And this is what they yearn and crave for the most. So after playing the games in the usual first couple of decades of life, 
they begin to intuit that they're losing. Because the, the despite the fact that they have this huge appetite, they cannot get the most basic sustenance of love, true love. They don't have access to it. And they're so frightened about coming clean or coming open or being open about this need which they have. Okay? Now they must learn to eventually come clean and come open so that they, they can experience love, true love. Because that's exactly what they need. That's their life task, is to experience true love. Okay? Now this is, Saturn in Scorpio is a, it's, it's, I call it a very messy placement because Scorpio is pretty, pretty deep. You know, there's really, there are really no layers. It's, Scorpio is all over the place in terms of their internal emotional turmoil. And when Saturn comes into the mix, the mix, it's like throwing mentos into a bottle of Coke, right? And sealing it. Now, nothing happens. You can shake it and shake it, nothing happens. It seems to be, there's no reaction. It's, it's normal. But you just unscrew that cock for a moment and, you know, you have a reaction that you couldn't even see coming. And that's what happens. You know, when the Scorpio, when the Saturn and Scorpio personality is pushed to the point where they start begin to, they start, they begin to fear uh, vulnerability, they explode. And the explosion is, you know, if you've ever witnessed it, it's, it's terrifying. Because what is coming out is a lot of pent-up emotions that have been stored for who knows how long. Okay, so Saturn and Scorpio plays out first as a, an absolute deathly fear of vulnerability intimacy okay and it's difficult to penetrate because the individual doesn't even know that this is who, this is how they are the defenses are so sophisticated that they are it is blocked to themselves and so this is not an easy task reaching beyond that blockage you know all right so after saturn and scorpio we now go to saturn and sagittarius and what is the essence of sagittarius sagittarius is the preparation for material success based on the release that took place in scorpio we, it is it is filled sagittarius is filled by the release of sexual energy that is the arrow carried by the the centaur the archer how far that arrow travels depends on how much of that sexual energy is released so what saturn in Sagittarius does, it makes sure that the individual searches for that release and doesn't find it. Because what Saturn is demanding is that the release must be such that it is so profound because of the work that must be done on the 10. So usually, Saturn in Sagittarius doesn't find the, the reward for that, all that life work takes place in Capricorn. What is produced in Capricorn. So when you find Saturn in Sagittarius, your eyes best look to the 10th house or in Cap or Capricornian placements. Whatever is going on there is what is promised. Because what the what Saturn wants from Sagittarius is the seriousness about that release. How far that arrow must travel. That is Saturn in Sagittarius is the a humongous potential for material success humongous huge okay now whether this is achieved or not depends on how much uh, uh, how much understanding the native has now anything with saturn doesn't really quite mature until after the first saturn return that's when the, the door is open for opportunity now sagittarius is ruled by jupiter so what this implies is there's a it's a controlled release and this is what the uh, the Saturn and Sagittarius native must look for. Usually what happens is they are in so much of a hurry to release that they keep making mistakes. So it's either they're given too much or they're given too little. They just can't find the right amount. So, And this shows up also at the timing issue. They seem to initially to experience a, ho a horrendous amount of ill luck, bad luck. Just bad timing in the wrong place, at the wrong time, etc., etc. Until the native begins to understand that this ill timing is coming from deep, deep, deep within them, because of the nature of their release. Now, when this is understood, usually towards after the first Saturn return, when they begin to recalibrate, and that recalibration begins, it it you notice the recalibration as a change in attitude of the person 
maturity begins to set in. They begin to understand that growth for them must be procedural and it must be controlled. There are no sudden bursts of, you know, expansion here. No, it must be step by step. And the way they know is that they can always see how they get to the next step. There's no ambiguity. And any time they cannot see how they get to the next step, then it is most likely that is not the next step. That's really what it is. Because when Saturn gets into Capricorn, something amazing truly happens here. It means that the emphasis is now placed on the life work. The work that must be done. You know, your calling, your aspiration in life. Emphasis is now placed on that. And you can understand that with Saturn and Capricorn, the initial exploration of these uh, psychic tendency is an absolute blockage in the manifestation of this life work. Because the life work is not external of you. It is internal. It revolves around a particular type of beingness, which the individual must achieve. They must understand that in this life, they have come to demonstrate to the whole world their mark. I was here, and everybody has to understand that I was here, not as an arrogant gesture, but as a testament for a life work, a work that took time, pain, sacrifice, all those qualities that Saturn is noted for, perseverance, difficulty, but yet I made it, and I played according to the rules, the generally acceptable rules for everybody. Because what these natives, Saturn and Capricorn, what they want, they want to be, to be acknowledged by the establishment as, a, as one of them. Saturn and Capricorn is how the, ascent, is how the uh, establishment grows. So a new member of the establishment is born. That's really what it is, and it's a powerful one, so to speak, because the individual with Saturn in Capricorn, or those groups of individuals with Saturn in Capricorn, have come to demonstrate their life work to the world. And usually this life work is not something that takes 10 years, or 20 years, or 30 years. Usually it takes something, something that takes a minimum 40 years. So don't expect success till you're in your 40s, upwards. But success lasts. It's not one that can be taken away. It is one that ultimately will be built on a solid foundation. But you may have to suffer more than most. Many false starts. Because what you are asked to construct is an extension of the establishment. A foundation. And then you must look to the Saturn in Cancer. Or Saturn in the, or whatever is in the fourth house. Because that's where the foundation is built for such a lofty purpose. But the, 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 the work that needs to be done is material. And it's not just material. It's establishment material. Okay? All right. And from there, we move into Saturn and Aquarius. Now, Aquarius, we all know what Aquarius really is. Aquarius is the duality of, 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 uh, of perception in the sense that it's not the kind of duality you find in Gemini. It's the duality between the emotions and non-emotions, you know? That's really what it is, because what Aquarius is concerned with is the objectification of reality. So they usually, it usually starts with the objectification of the self. So when Aquarians understand themselves, then they are ready for success. That's where it starts. They must understand themselves. And they understand the way that their psyche works. And you would know that they understand it because they can explain it and they stop apologizing for what they are. Then they are ready for success. And when Saturn finds itself in Aquarius, it basically blocks that understanding. And so the individual spends so much time in a state of confusion because they want to hold on to something objective, a knowledge form or a piece of understanding that is so reliable, and yet they are blocked from this. So the individual begins to search for certainty in the mind, in the, within themselves, and they can't find any. And they carry on like this in this few state for a really long time. They begin to suffer mental confusion. It's almost like a, a, a blockage of the mind. They know that the potential for, uh, for knowledge, for higher forms of knowledge, you know, for, for, for experiencing things beyond the mundane is there within them. They can feel it, but they have no access to it. 
And that's because the, what the contribution is supposed to make is supposed to be the contribution. So everyone who's born in that three-year period of Saturn and Aquarius carries this archetype this, and this need to want to redefine. Because Aquarius and Capricorn are both ruled by Saturn. It's just that in Capricorn is the real work itself, the establishment work. Aquarius is an extension of that because it's an extension of that Capricornian energy, that establishment. It is a mutation of the establishment. So Saturn Aquarius comes to mutate Capricorn. So it wants to take an, a generally acceptable body of knowledge and to show why it is a different thing and then to connect it to the establishment, thereby helping the body of knowledge to grow, often in very radical ways. So they are the vanguards of new thinking. But when they initially start out, Saturn and Capricorn de denies that ability, even though the individual knows that they have that ability. They can feel it. They have felt it all their life. But they can't do anything with it. They can't go anywhere. They can't even put their ideas down. And so they struggle. Now, when the changes within them start, right, it starts as their ability to objectify themselves, to understand themselves, and then to stop apologizing for <laughs> how they are, and then they are ready to for success then because at that stage the mind clears up and they are ready to be able to perceive this mutation in the group idea the established idea that allows for breakthroughs to happen okay and when this when they're successful with this then they are recognized by their peers and their peers are other intellectuals or other people who have objectified some aspect of reality as as you know as knowledge now, when Saturn moves into a, into Pisces, you know, um, it's it's it, 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 you know this is an absolute mismatch. When Saturn moves into Saturn, doesn't understand Pisces because Pisces is the negation of Saturn, and the the, the transformation actually begins in in Uranus in, in in Aquarius because when the knowledge form that is generated in Aquarius by Saturn in Aquarius. It's so far ahead of its time. It begins to intuit the existence of a horizon beyond which it cannot penetrate. That horizon is Pisces. Because it is in that horizon that Saturn dissolves. Because it begins to confront the inescapable truth. And what is that truth? That the, the real reality is Piscean, is Neptunian. That Saturn, the hard material reality, is actually false. And this is not an easy thing for Saturn to comprehend. It's not. How can it? You know, its very essence is the establishment of hard material order. But in Pisces, this dissolves. There is nothing hard. There's nothing material. There's nothing to hold on to, really. And so it's, it's, it's a challenge. And so what happens is that Saturn tries to crystallize something in Pisces. It's always looking for something to crystallize into form. It doesn't find any because the very essence of Pisces is a negation of that form. And so what happens is a dynamic, a very powerfully creative dynamic that first shows up as an absolute mental, emotional and spiritual confusion of the mind. These are people who suffer. They cannot understand the everyday reality that everyone is used to. And so they're enmeshed in confusion. They are enmeshed within worlds. They drift in and out of different types of worlds that the individual is tormented. And the worst, the, the beautiful thing about, well, is it beautiful, or the worst aspect of all this is that they cannot express this. You cannot see that within them because Saturnian defenses are some of the most sophisticated. So all of this is taking place within them and absolutely hidden. Now, the way you know that this is taking place is that the individual acts absolutely erratically. They have no rhyme or reason to their behavior. They may act like people that have mental problems. They may act like people who just can't get their shit together. They can't, they, they can't seem to get their life together. Life seems to just drift by them. They seem to be to have no rhyme or reason to their behavior. You see? And people just, you know, people may look at them as people who have mental issues, or they may look at them as people who just can't, you know, are losers or something. They can't get their stuff together. But what's really happening is that the individual is, individual is trying to find a balance between the two contrasting di dynamics. They're trying to find a way to wield this thing they have been given. And when they are able to do this, what you have is 
you have an absolutely creative human being that is stuck in an incubator. Because the access that they have is access to a world that is formless. So their imagination. And that is, the, that is where we bring it. That, because that is the true reality. And that's where everything starts this journey from. So when they're able to get their shit together, so to speak, then what you have are people who have the absolute clearest imagination into worlds that you cannot even begin to imagine. So these are your movie, you know, these are your, your storytellers. The ones who can weave a tale of beyond, they can stretch your imagination to, with no limits, literally, you know, out of proportion. And that's when it's functioning correctly. When they're struggling with life or they cannot really understand, then they become your Decepticons. They are, you know, they have the uncanny ability to project falsehood as truth. They are so good at this that they form first class spies. You know, they're, they're your tricksters and your con your con con men or con women. Yeah, but those are the negative expressions. And the negative expression simply means that the individual, you know, has not understood the energy that they carry and how to utilize this in constructive ways. And so they have begun to engage with the consequences that Saturn dictates. Because Saturn, you know, one wrong move and then you face two consequences, and then you have to you initiate four wrong moves to correct two consequences and you end up with what eight consequences and on and on it goes till till you're swamped that's the nature of saturn in pisces and so at some point in time the individual feels like falling on their sword they feel so overwhelmed with life that they feel like just ending it all but it's at that point that they they are ready for the biggest breakthrough of all they have to surrender they have to surrender and let the current of Pisces carry them. And so they have to trust their imagination. They have to trust their intuition. They have to trust the creative unknown within them and let it drift. Let, they have to allow themselves the space to drift. So it usually comes with a lot of suffering because the material world, especially the financial material world, is always, on, is always impinging on that reality. And that is where they struggle the most. They cannot cope. So they have to go through the difficulty of the reset. That's really what it is. So they have to become homeless, broke, bankrupt, or whatever it is. They have to pass through that bottleneck. So as to cleanse themselves of all those consequences of Saturn. Thereby giving themselves a new birth where they can drift. Now the danger here is if the stress becomes too much, they can go into substance abuse as a way to calm those that you know, huge amount of confusion which they're saddled with almost all their lives because nobody understands what they're going through and they can't explain it <laughs> you know they can't explain it it's not something that you can easily tell anyone and therein lies the trouble but what they need is an outlet for that mind for that imagining that they have because what they're having is an impingement on their imagination they you know in the beginning it starts off as a humongous amount of confusion but over time and with maturity then the fog in their mind begins to clear and they can now see the pathways that allow them to drift in their imagination and then drift constructively whereby they can produce works of art that really transform understanding. So these are your potential scientists in the making. They have access to the truth of existence. And if they find a way to be able to monetize that, Saturn in Pisces rewards them with a very, very, very good financial you know, reward. Usually money coming from everyone. All right, that's about it. And it's almost an hour long. Uh, I've been freestyling Saturn in, <laughs> in the signs. I mean, you know, you know, you can change it and also look at it as Saturn in the houses, but I'd be, I'd be, I'd be careful doing that because there are some significant differences. All right, thank you.